Welcome back, everybody. My name is Nick. This is Swiftful Thinking, and we're going to look at MVVM with Swift Concurrency. So again, when I made this playlist, I was still learning the ins and outs of Swift Concurrency. I think I still am. Any good developer should always be learning. But since I made the video, I have been using MVVM in a bunch of apps with Swift Concurrency, and I have found a couple patterns that I've been using very often, and I think it would help some people out to kind of just go over a very basic use case of MVVM with Swift Concurrency. It's not too far off from most of the code that we've done in this playlist, but I wanted to just make one more quick video to really just outline kind of some of the good places to maybe put actors or not to put actors, um, specifically the main actor, and also maybe where we should start our tasks. My personal preference is doing most of this stuff in the view model. I think that is a very natural place to put it for MVVM. But let's check out the code first. And then afterward, uh, I would love to hear your feedback if you guys are doing something similar to this in your apps. All right, welcome back everybody. Another video, I guess I wasn't really originally planning on doing it, but I did not explicitly kind of go over an MVVM routine with async await, and I wanted to kind of get that out there. Um, I've been using async await now basically since I made this playlist, since it basically since it came out, and I use MVVM or a derivative of MVVM in almost all of my apps. And so I wanted to just show you maybe a common pattern that I think would probably help Probably if I was applying like Pareto's law to applications or Swift UI developers this would probably apply to most use cases of MVVM. Let's right click the navigator, create a new file, Swift UI view, and let's call this one MVVM, uh, MVVM bootcamp. Why not? Because it's the only MVVM file that we have in this project. MVVM bootcamp. I'm going to create a final class and I'm going to call it MVVM bootcamp and conform to observable object. Let's initialize one from our view with an at state object, private var. Sorry, this should be MVVM bootcamp view model. Of course, come on, Nick. And this will be our view model, which we'll set equal to MVVM bootcamp view model. It's gonna be very similar to the last video. Let's create some like data services that we can like mimic as if this was a real application. So I'm gonna create a Final class here, let's call this one my manager class. Sure. Let's create another one that's maybe an actor. So we have to wait to get into the actor and we'll say actor, we'll call this one my manager actor and open the brackets here as well. Inside the view model, let's get a reference to manager class and we'll set that equal to my manager class as well as manager actor, set it equal to my manager actor. Okay, let's simulate some functions, right? So we want to obviously call some functions in here. So I'm gonna create a func get data that will be asynchronous throws and returns maybe a string. Let's just return some data and I'm just gonna copy and paste that into the actor as well. So the most common use case I think when using MVVM is that you have some sort of action from the view. So maybe I have a button that says like click me and then the view is going to trigger a function. So from the view, we will call a function inside the view model. So my view model will say maybe on, you know, call to action button pressed, right? So if you have a bunch of buttons on your screen, they'll have different functions. And then we'll have on call to action button pressed, on this button pressed, on that button tapped. Those are the kind of functions that we usually put into the view model. And I'm gonna purposely keep this on call to action button pressed synchronous. So I'm not gonna make this function asynchronous. I'm gonna instead open up a task inside this function. And the reason I'm doing that is so the UI here can remain synchronous. So in here I can call view model dot on call to action button pressed. And I don't need to create any sort of task inside the view. Now, it's not a bad thing to create the tasks in the view. Like there are definitely use cases for doing that. So if, for example, you wanted like a return after the await, and then you wanted to do something in the view directly, obviously you would want to keep that task inside the view. 
But for most functions, we want to call something in our view model, and then we'll manage the task inside our view model. So I'll create a private var called tasks, which I showed you guys in the last video. This will be an array of tasks. These tasks will not throw errors, so they'll be of type of void is the success, and never is the failure, meaning it never will throw an error. So in here, I'm going to then call some of these functions. So here we want to say, we'll do an at published private set var my data of type string, set it equal to starting text. And then in here, we're going to call my data equals manager class dot get data. Of course, this function in here is asynchronous and throws. So we need to try await. And I want to hold a reference to this task. So we'll say let task equals task. And then we'll append to our tasks array this task. So now if we want to later cancel this task, we can easily do that, right? We can call that on disappear. And then we can call like something like func cancel tasks. And we can call tasks dot for each cancel. And then we can even set it back to a blank array just to, just to ensure that we don't have any references hanging around. And I know this generic is probably tripping some people up. Every task has a success value and a failure value. And this right here, we're saying that this task the success is a void. It's just, it's not returning anything out of the function and there's never going to be an error thrown. But when we created this, obviously we added a try, meaning there could be an error. And so this is telling us that the task here actually has an error where we said it was going to be never. And so, yeah, we could change this to be an error type, but generally what I'll do instead is create a do catch statement inside this task. So instead of throwing the error outside of the task, we'll just catch the error inside the task. So now this task itself is not throwing errors, but inside the task, we're going to throw errors and catch them here. So here I'll just print out the error. We're almost done here. We're almost done here. I'm going to wrap up by creating just one more other button. Let's do a VStack. All right, now as I was saying earlier, I like this setup because we can keep the functions from the view to be totally synchronous. And this way, if we like inject them in some sort of delegate or with some sort of protocol, we don't need to necessarily be asynchronous in nature, right? We can call these synchronously. If I wanna change what's happening in here, it doesn't always have to be asynchronous. But on this note, I wanna talk a little bit about actors. So as you guys know, anything that updates the UI, right? Like the button here. So maybe this button has a, a reference to view model dot my data. Anything that is getting updated to the UI, like this published here needs to be on the main actor. So I could mark this as at main actor. And I covered this in an earlier video as well. And once we do that, we are now going to have this problem where this function is not on the main actor. And obviously we have this, this context issue. So one way to get over that would be to call at main actor so that this function is on the main actor. So everything inside the function is also on the main actor. Another way we could do it is actually inside this task, we declare that this task must be specifically on the main actor. Obviously both of these work, but what I've come to find is that a lot of times, most of my view model, I actually want to put on the main actor, if not all of it, because most of the view model is updating the view. It's very coupled to the view, right? In this case, we want basically this to be on the main actor. And we also want this to be on the main actor. And we're already doing at main actor twice here. So oftentimes I've been taking the view model and just making the view model on the main actor. And that solves a lot of these problems. Now, one thing I also want to point out here is that I can also call the, maybe the manager actor dot get data. Now the cool thing about this setup here, so this function is now on the main actor. This task is now on the main actor, of course, but when we go and await this value, 
when it gets into over here, right, this actor, this actor is obviously not on the main actor. And so in previous videos in this series, I was doing something like let data equals this, and then we can await main actor dot run, and then we can call self dot my data equals data. I did this pattern a bunch in this series, and I think there have been updates, either I was wrong or there have been updates to the Swift language, but as it stands today, when we come back from this await, it will return to the actor that it was called on. So we can revert this, and here we can assume that when I call this function, we're on the main actor. When it goes and gets the data, it's gonna be on this other actor. But when it returns the data here, it's actually coming back onto the main actor. So it's doing all of those switches for us behind the scenes. And that's why we don't have any like error here. Like there would be an error that said we couldn't update my data if we were not on the main actor. But obviously we are because it is compiling. All right, so that is it for me. There are obviously a ton of different patterns and edge cases where maybe this pattern doesn't work or we wanna change and do something else. But generally speaking, I think this is probably the most like common or practical MVVM pattern for async await for Swift concurrency. Let me know if you guys agree or disagree in the comments. And as always, thank you for watching. My name is Nick, this is Swiftful Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video.